Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Appliance Webinar on our Microcom series. Uh, I think uh, many of you may know most of us. I'm Gary Rosen. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Pliant. We have Mark Rufus, who's our Regional Sales Manager, and Mark Gonzalez, who kind of doubles as a Sales Manager, and our Market Development guys. Um, for today's webinar, you guys are going to be able to ask questions. If you look on your control panel, uh, you will see a, a question section. We'll do our best to uh, answer them in real time. Some of them we may, may wait a little bit if we're coming up to that section uh, shortly. Uh, so we'll inject those as necessary uh, and possible. Um, and for today's presentation, uh, you're going to have Art and Mark taking you through everything, and I will uh, moderate the questions. So have a good session. I'm going to turn it over to Art. Thank you, Gary. So we'll uh, move right into it. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be covering. Uh, the primary purpose of this uh, presentation is for covering Microcom. Um, we've had Microcom presentations in the past, but this one we're going to take a little bit of a different take on it and try to focus more on um, broader strokes in terms of applications, um, but also talking about um, just general operation of the system itself. And that's really what I'm going to start out with. Um, and then we're going to kind of, Mark and I are kind of going to go back and forth. Mark's going to jump a little more into the details of each uh, part of the Microcom series and where I'm going to keep it more, uh, more a little high level. Um, so we're going to start actually, we're going to, um, um, we are going to cover both the M and the XR. So just so everybody understands, Microcom is a series that now has two products, the Microcom M and the Microcom XR. And you're going to learn a lot about the differences between the two and a little bit more details about each one of them. So let's start out by just kind of taking a high level look at the system overall. Now this is um, basically concerns both the M and the XR. And one of the things that's really kind of cool, and you're gonna hear it several times, is that uh, the system itself does not require a base station. Um, it's basically one pack and it's all pack to pack communications. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, but essentially it's one, one pack. Um, and it does multiple modes of operation. So you don't have to worry about ordering different packs for different purposes and so forth. One packs pretty much does everything. It does full duplex, it does listen only, it does shared for the XR. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But as I mentioned, it is a point-to-point -point topology. And what that really means is that all packs can speak to each other. Okay, they can, if you're using a full duplex pack, any pack can speak to any other pack that is also a full duplex. And communication is sent in terms of the audio data from pack to pack. So as I mentioned earlier, no base station required. Really makes it kind of cool for a lot of basic uh, installations. Um, it is based on a master pack. So you see one of the packs here has an M on it. That one is designated. It's not a different piece of hardware. It's designated as a master pack. And we'll show you how to do that. And it is basically the sync source. And with the master pack, what we usually recommend is that pack should be somewhat uh, uh, not only centrally located, but if possible to be stationary. It doesn't have to be, but should be definitely uh, centrally located as possible. And the way the system works is the master pack essentially sends out a beacon, which is represented by the circle here. And all of the packs must be in range of that beacon in order to operate. Keep in mind, this is frequency hopping spread spectrum. So we're taking up either the 900 meg band or the 2.4 gig band, and we're basically hopping frequencies across the entire band. Um, and when you do that, you have to be able to synchronize all those hopping patterns with all the different packs. So that's really what the beacon does. So it sends out the beacon to all the different packs. So if a non-master pack, in this case, 0, 1 through 0, 4, if any of those go out of range, um, all the other, let's say one of them goes out of range, all the other packs can still communicate. It really has no effect on it. Conversely, though, if the master pack were to go out of range of all the other packs or would be turned off or the battery would go dead, then no packs communicate. So the master pack is key to op making the entire system operate. So that's very important to remember. And we'll, we'll kind of hammer that home as we go. Um, this is kind of a recommendation. We did mention earlier that um, we do recommend that the master is centrally located. And this kind of shows why we recommend that. As you can see here, once again, the circle essentially represents the, the range of the beacon signal. You see it here, the blue circle. And in this case, we're recommending put the, the master pack, and this shows an XR pack, could be an M pack, either one is fine. They both operate on the same uh, technology. So we have your master pack in the center. 
And the advantage of that is it's centrally located and it basically is a, a symmetrical system from the standpoint of the beacon. The beacon can reach the furthest packs within the system. Of course, now, as I mentioned, all the packs have to be in range of the beacon. In this particular uh, situation, pack 01 and pack 04 are the furthest from each other. So the thing to remember is, is not only both of these have to be within range, but at some point, if both of those were actually in range of the master, it is entirely possible that 0 and 1 and 0 and 4 could be far enough away from each other because the actual audio communication is done from pack to pack that you could have dropouts or it could log out because of that. But uh, the sync master has to be there all the time for everybody. Um, what we don't recommend is that you have a more asymmetrical sync distribution. Um, so let's say you have a master pack um, a theater example, you have that like in the back part of the theater somewhere and you've got somebody that needs to go out into the house or something like that and they get too far away from or they go beyond a wall or something and they go beyond the beacon, um, that pack will log out. So it's better to have that pack somewhere centrally located so that everybody can try to be within the range of that master pack. So we don't recommend you put the master pack in a, uh, in a different location other than a centrally located position. The master pack doesn't necessarily mean it's the most important person on your crew. It really has to do with how you want to cover that, that area. Um, other things to mention is we do have what's called a group function. Now the group function is actually for allowing multiple microcom systems to operate in the same RF space. Okay, so a group designates um, a group of microcom packs. In this case, you see two separate groups. They're both uh, microcom M, five uh, packs per system. You see one of them set to group five, one of them set to group 25. Now this could be two XR systems, it could be an M and an XR system. What we're actually doing here with the group function, just to kind of dig in a little bit, is we're actually um, basically selecting the hopping patterns so that they don't step on each other, so that they can uh, essentially stay away from each other so they don't interfere uh, between the two systems, okay? So you can only communicate audio-wise within the groups themselves. So in this example, group 25 here down at the bottom left and group five at the top right, they're autonomous from each other. There's no communication audio-wise between the two systems. This could, good example, this could be your audio crew and this could be your lighting crew and they can be completely separate from each other. Let's say it's a church application. You got your cameras over here, you got your ushers over here, and they have no way to really talk between each other. We'll talk about other ways to get around that, um, but that's the way the actual uh, the group function works. You can have up to four of these groups in one location, so you can have quite a bit of uh, communication going on in one RF space. And when we say area, we're talking about an RF uh, space. Each separate group, uh, group should have their own um, uh, group number, and that group number should be at least 10 apart. So in this example, that's why we have group five and group 25. They could be anything as long as they're, uh, they're 10 group numbers apart. Um, within M and XR, um, there are 52 groups to choose from. There's an exception to that. We do sell an Australian version of the 900 meg product, and that's actually a, what's called a half band system, um, uh, just based, based on the regulations there. So it takes up half the RF space. So you have 25 groups instead of uh, 52 groups. So a little bit of a caveat there. So that's kind of the basic overview of the, uh, of the two systems and kind of how they operate. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hand it over to Mark and he's gonna dig into some of the specifics. Thanks, Mark. So we're going to go through the Microcom M family first and get into the nuts and bolts of this system. Thank you all for stopping by today. There we go. So the Microcom M system starts with the belt packs, which are single channel economical belt packs for everybody to utilize. Simple pack-to-pack -pack operation is already just described in the previous slides. Um, you can use with the M system up to five full duplex users, and there's an unlimited amount of listen-only users with the Microcom M system. The talk button is latching, so it provides you with hands-free operation. And it's got an excellent audio clarity, excellent dynamic range, 
this is a purpose-built product for intercom applications. It's not a repurposed device from some other type of uh, RF listening system. The unlicensed 900 band is what we're operating in here in the United States, and as already described, half of that in, in um, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand. We also offer 2.4 for around the world operation. So if you're going to be going out of the country for any reason, you may want to consider getting a 2.4 system instead of the 900. But for the most part, we lead with the 900 megahertz system. Hi, Gary. Hi. Uh, just to want to interject for a second, Mark. Uh, because I know we have some of our international uh, partners online with us today. Uh, for the North American market, we're really very fortunate. The 900 band is, is just superb, performs really well, and it's actually legal for use and approved in uh, Mexico and in Canada. So any place in North America, you've got the full 900 band available to use. Thanks, Gary. And also to elaborate further on that, you're able to use 900 band in Puerto Rico. So that's just a little FYI there for Puerto Rico. The um, 900M features encrypted digital frequencies, hopping technology, the FHSS, proprietary hopping sequences, simple RF setup. And there's no need to do any kind of manipulations with these systems. It's pretty much set it and forget it. Once you set up the individual user um, IDs and group IDs, you're off to the races. The system figures everything out. It's very small, very lightweight. It's water resistant. Nice 10 hour battery life. Operates while charging, so you can use an external USB power device to be charging the bell pack while you're working. It's, it comes with a two-year warranty with registration. You know, the end user will receive the device. It has a one year out of the box. Once they register with Pliant Technologies, they'll get a second year warranty. And it comes with a plethora of accessories. You have your little leather holster there that has the integrated belt clip, a neck strap, and then the USB charging cable. This device will charge not only on our nice little um, small five bay brick that we sell here at Pliant, but it also will charge off of any USB charging device on the market at this time. So you could charge this in your car if you had to. Um, the LED lights will give you login status as well as battery status. And the menu settings are provided here through the mode button. And that's where you get in there and start dialing in and programming the system to operate with each other, to set the group for the belt packs, how, how your side tone is, your receiving mode, if you're in duplex or listen only via the user one through four. Um, mic gain and output level can all be controlled through the front panel of the microcom and the system. Now we're excited to talk about the Microgram XR, which is shipping and is part of this family, but it goes a step further than where the Microcom M brings us. This is a dual channel system or a two intercom channel system. It's A or B. It's simple pack to pack operation, 10 users duplex with the Microcom XR. So in the same range that you achieved with the 900M, which Art will be talking about ranges later on in the presentation, you can you have 10 users in the same range as the five users in the M. You can also go to an extended range mode and have only five users operating in the extended range mode. And you get approximately a 30% increase benefit and range from there and art has some great examples for that later on in the presentation unlimited amount of shared user options here just like the m i'm sorry uh the shared user operation is unique to the xr system listen only operation is just like what the m has and shared that mode that i just talked about there the shared mode art will describe in depth later on has a um, similar latching or latching momentary talk button. Depends on how you push the button. If you push it and hold it for a second while speaking and then take your hand off, your finger off, it will, you know, de-latch. If you push it and take your finger off, it will latch. 
Uh, it's got in and out of range modes, three beeps out, two beeps in. RF group security code, which before you can join a group with the belt pack, you have to know the security code. So you have not only the encryption that is offered in the RF level, but you also within the family of products, you have to have one security code to get into that group of XR. Uh, button lock function, which basically turns everything off except the volume and the power, which could really help make the um, simplify the bell packs operation for volunteers and technically challenged people. Unlicensed 902.4, just like the Microcom M. The encrypted digital FHSS technology that we use here, proprietary hopping sequence. Again, very easy to set up, no, no muss, no fuss. IP67 rated in this particular device, which this can be submerged. Uh, it can, you know, you can fall into a pool with it and uh, it'll survive. Uh, it also can handle dust conditions too. A uh, nice comprehensive OLED display, which gives us a lot more resolution to work with so we can give you a lot more information in a much more user-friendly manner. Field replaceable battery in this particular device, and we have a very nice battery charger available for it. We'll be showing a picture of it shortly. And this has a 12-hour battery life, the three and a half an hour charge in USB. And here's a really lovely shot of the drop-in charger for the Microcom XR that you'll simultaneously charge your batteries and the batteries that are inside of the belt packs. So in the morning when you get up after the device is charged overnight, you'll be able to pick up a fully charged belt pack and have a spare battery to go. And again, the LED gives you login status and battery status. And also the menu button here allows you to get in there and really dig around and go through all of those user modes that uh, Art's gonna be getting into shortly adjust your side tone miking and apple level everything you need to get at inside of this unit can be achieved through that mode button one interesting feature to point out is the channel a b on off that enables me to basically even simplify this belt pack further and turn off the secondary channel so that the person only has access to the primary channel that they need to work on so they need to be working in a as is pictured here they'll be working in channel a they can't inadvertently mistakenly go to channel b and cause themselves a problem uh, it has the operation mode is displayed on the screen there. You can barely see it in this particular picture, but you'll get a better shot of that later on in the presentation. 10U and 5U settings and your button lock, talk mode, and channel. And I'm pushing the button and it's going. And I went too far. Sorry about that, folks. You want me to drive from here, Mark? Let me let me drive back. Yeah, am, am I am, am I ready to hand it over to you? I think we're back where we need to be. It is. It's my turn now. Okay, um, it's your turn. Let me uh, get my camera back on here. And we should be to Mr. Mark Gonzalez, the host with the most, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Gonzalez. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Reefus. Yeah, as Mark mentioned uh, through his part of the presentation, one thing he noticed probably with the XR was there's two modes of operation. There's what we call the 10U mode and a 5U mode. So I'm going to explain that a little bit. Um, it's just like you would think it would be the 10U stands for 10 user mode, although it actually does more than that uh, when you include listen only and shared users. Um, but we also call that the normal range mode. We have a normal range and an extended range. The 10U is uh, what we call normal range. And we're going to talk more about range because I've got some actual um, range tests that I did. Um, but in general, you get about 800 feet, uh, 240 meters at 900 meg, and about 450 or 137 meters at 2.4 gig uh, in the 10 user mode. And that's the normal range. Um, the other thing is part of the 10 user mode is you can have up to 10 full duplex users. So you assign one the master and then numbers zero. Uh, one through zero nine, and that gives you 10 full duplex users. And then you can also have shared users. Uh, and I'm gonna go into more detail about the shared user, but essentially what the shared user does 
Uh, it takes over one of the packs and uh, basically uses that slot as a shared uh, slot where you can put unlimited number of users that have access to that slot. And I'll explain how that works. Uh, but it basically takes away one full duplex user. So that's why we say nine full duplex users. And of course, unlimited number of listeners, either way. Um, the five user mode, now keep in mind the five user mode or the extended range mode is only available on the 900 meg product. Um, so the 2.4 product only does the 10U mode. Um, when you go to the extended range mode, you get about a 25% increase in the range over the 10U mode. And that's about a thousand feet or about 300 meters. Um, once again, only a 900 meg. Um, and also the shared operation exists for this as well. Once again, though, it takes away one of the slots. So you have up to five, uh, sorry, four full duplex users and unlimited less, uh, number of listeners. So when you do this, when you set everything up, and Mark has mentioned a little bit about um, the different types of what we're calling roles or the users. Uh, user ID is another, another way to think of it. Um, we've mentioned several times that one of the packs has to be a master, so there always has to be at least one master. And in the XR, you set that up as user number or user M, and that then becomes designated as the master. And that shows up on the display and it says user M, and then there's also a little M. In reality, when you look at the display, it sort of looks like a little Gmail icon, but uh, you can't get your Gmail on here yet. Wait till version two. Um, as again, the, the master generates the, the system's beacon. Um, so keep that in mind when you're talking about range. Um, as I mentioned, when you're in the five U mode, you can have up to four additional users. So you have zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, and it will go all the way up to nine in your 10 U mode. In this example, we're showing uh, five U mode. Um, so you have five full duplex users and you can see the paths here. These are full duplex paths, these black lines. Um, so that you can come, that anybody can listen to anybody. So any pack can, can have a conversation with any, other, any of the other uh, packs on the system. Um, then you have listen only. Listen only is designated by blue, meaning that they have the ability to listen um, to either channel A or channel B. And as Mark mentioned, that can be customized based on the pack. So you could lock out one of the channels if you need to. If you have a listen only person, let's say a spotlight operator, only needs to hear the lighting channel. You could make that channel A and then keep him off of channel B. Um, there's no talk capabilities with the, uh, the listen only users as expected. Now the shared user is a little bit different. It's kind of in between the full duplex and the listen only. You can have an unlimited number of shared users, although you lose, in this case, you're losing slot number four um, and you're changing everybody on that slot to a shared user. And all you do is you set that pack's ID to S and then what it does is it allows anybody that's set up as a shared user to essentially take the last available slot on the system. So um, that, that's why there's a reduction of the one user. So it would be nine in the uh, ten, 10U mode. The other thing that's different is that now the talk button becomes momentary. And it makes sense because you don't want somebody to latch their talk on and then taking up that shared spot from everybody else. So the shared user is momentary only, but it's still full duplex. You're pressing your talk button, you're still talking and listening at the same time. Um, if for some reason somebody's on that shared slot uh, and somebody else tries to log into it, then you'll get a busy signal, which is just simply a, a, a series of beeps um, within the pack that you'll hear in your ear. So that's the shared mode. So as you can see here, this really opens up this system for quite a few users. Uh, you can have a limited listening only and unlimited shared, so it really opens it up, even for the uh, five user mode. Uh, we do have this comparison chart, um, which, by the way, this kind of reminds me. Um, you may have noticed on the uh, the control board, on the go to go to webinar control board, that we have some handouts. There are five handouts there, and those handouts uh, include this presentation in a printable version. Uh, it's a PDF. Um, then we also have some of our operation manuals as well as a brochure. So uh, make sure if you need any of those uh, resources uh, to download those, you can also go to our website. Everything's on the website with the exception of this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'm not gonna cover everything in these two slides, which is kind of a comparison, but I am gonna point out some of the major differences. Uh, as Mark mentioned, the, one of the biggest differences is Microcom M is a single channel. Microcom XR is a, is a dual channel or A or B channel. Um, uh, expanded user mode, shared users for XR. Um, the other things that are a little bit different is the button lock function, the ability to have a security code. So if you're, let's say, working with a government entity or something and they're concerned about 
uh, people being able to buy a pack and be able to log in. The security code is pretty important, and that's available on the XR, not on the uh, on the M. Um, the other thing we've added is um, in and out of range tones. And as Mark mentioned, when you get out of range, and it's essentially indicating to you when you walk out of the range of the beacon, you'll hear three beeps. And then as soon as you come back into the range, so it's a good indication to kind of tell you, oh, you're kind of on the edge of range, need to come back in towards closer to the master unit. Um, some more information, not going to go through everything, but I will mention we did uh, include some pricing information on here, and this is U.S. list price information, so your pricing may vary based on, on where you're located. Um, U.S. list price for Microcom M is $379. That's just for the pack, so as you can see, very affordable. Uh, even for the Microcom XR, for everything that it can do, it's very affordable, $749 list price. Um, because it does require a headset, and we have a full complement of headsets, which Mark's going to tell us all about, um, because of that, we included kind of an average headset price. We have headsets ranging from $99 US all the way up to $350 US. So I took kind of an average of that and put that here. So a per user price is around $550, uh, all the way up to $920 for the XR with a headset. It could be a little more, it could be a little less. So just kind of throwing out, out there so you can kind of get an idea of the, the cost of the system. So let's talk specifically about range. Now, I did some range tests in both 900 and 24 with both the M and the XR. Um, what I'm going to show you here uh, is basically a Google map um, printout or, uh, I'm sorry, screen capture um, where I basically took a pack um, in my house and had my son and my wife basically have the, the pack in the house, which was the master. So looking at this map, um, they were in the house and um, it was only two packs, so one master in the house. And then I got on my bike and basically rode um, as far as I could until I lost communication. So the first example here is the five U mode, and this is for XR again, this is not M, this is XR. Five user mode, which once again is the extended range mode. We got about 1,024 feet away. And this is, keep in mind, they were inside of a house with, uh, wasn't steel structure, it's wooden brick, um, but there are a lot of trees and other houses in the way, and there's also a hill in the way. So that's pretty darn good for, in terms of range, uh, 1,024 feet before I was able to not be able to communicate anymore. Uh, if you look at the 10 user mode, um, it was uh, 816 feet. So this is where we got the about 25% increase between the 10 U and the 5 U. So the 5 U uh, extended range mode is about 25% more uh, than the 10 U mode. So those are some good examples of uh, actual range of the 900 meg system. Now we went to the XR, as expected, 2.4 is very much line of sight. So you can only imagine uh, the comparison between 900 and 24, you're gonna see some differences. Uh, but this is still through a hill and through two houses. We were still able to get about 413 feet away, uh, still able to communicate. Um, and as, of course, as to be expected as well, and this is by the way, with my body being in between the master and myself. So kind of a worst case scenario. Um, then when you go to the 900M, this is the M and not the XR. As you can see, they're a little bit shorter distances. So we got about a little less, or actually a little more than uh, half, half the distance as we did with XR uh, in the extended range mode. So we got about 534 feet. Remember, this is all outside too. We're also gonna give you some examples uh, inside a theater so you can get an idea of range uh, inside a building. Um, so that's about uh, 534 feet. And then with 2.4, once again, as expected, more line of sight, and we were about uh, 314 feet, 96 meters. So some good examples of actual range um, that we've done some testing. All right, so we're gonna, before we switch over to um, the applications for, uh, for Microcom, we're actually gonna have, share two polls with you, some quick things so we get an idea of what everybody is doing out there. So the first poll I'm going to launch is, what is currently your primary form of intercom communication? So go ahead and select one of those and we'll see what, uh, what we get in terms of the answers. Um, if you're a dealer or a rep or something like that, if you happen to use any type of intercom at your church or school or theater or your live band or whatever, you know, answer it uh, from that, re that respect. All right, give it a few more seconds. Get everybody a chance to answer. And then I will show you the results. Okay, we'll go ahead and close it and then I'll show you the resort results for this first one. So here's the results. 
Uh, looks like actually we've got a, quite a few people using uh, wireless intercom, which is great. A fair amount using uh, walkie talkies. That's good, good to know. So we're obviously gonna sp speak a lot about uh, wireless intercom and also we'll, we'll speak a little bit to the, the wired uh, part of it as well. Um, let me go ahead and I will share the, um, gonna hide this one and then share the second poll. And we'll switch over to that so we can talk a little bit more um, about applications. So this one says, what organization application are you most involved or interested in? Uh, theater broadcast, live events or corporate, house of worship, rental house or dealer rep? So everybody go and answer that one. Yeah, as expected, we have, we know that we have a lot of our dealers and reps on the webinar, which is great. Love that. All right, so we got some House of Worship and Theater Broadcast. So I'm gonna close this one and we will share the results so everybody can see. And as you can see there, a fair amount of uh, House of Worship and Theater. Um, you're in luck because actually we're gonna focus on those particular two applications uh, quite a bit. So let me hide that and then I am going to hand it back over to Mr. Reefus. And I will let him take it from here for a little while. So, Mark. Hey there. It's all yours. Muted. Uh, I'm muted. Excellent. Poll is done. We're onward and upward. So, let's talk about House of Worship applications where the Microcom series of products will shine. The simplicity of the products will shine here. You know, you're going to be handing these devices to people who don't know, you know, really intercom that all, at all. And uh, they're volunteers and they're non-technical people. So they just need to do a job and talk and shoot a camera. So very simple to use. Um, one pack for multiple modes of operation. So, you know, really, if you need to designate another pack as a master or if the master pack fails, a lot of our comp competitors' products you have to have a hardware pack that's denoted as the master with the Microcom family of products. Any pack can be set to master via its menu functions. No need for a base station, belt to belt, as we discussed earlier. Very versatile. You got a bunch of different headsets to choose from, from that I'll be talking about later on. Standard off the shelf USB powering capabilities and charging capabilities. Very portable, obviously. It has to be. It's small. It's great for you know, temporary locations like schools, movie theaters, and, uh, you know, if you're going to be going out and doing some kind of a tent revival or something, these products can walk out there very nicely. And, of course, the M is very, both products are very budget friendly. You can get, you know, less than a thousand dollars per user. You can have an intercom solution for any end user. So, just to recap, the both have user-friendly features and the XR gets a little deeper. Um, Microcom M is a single flow channel workflow. The XR is dual channel. Get more users with the XR. We have the 10 user mode and the five user mode and you have the extended range mode, which is nicer so you get better coverage within facilities and in outdoor environments. And the Microcom M is excellent for indoor applications and smaller coverage areas. And one of those slides that Art showed us before, when you take a 900 megahertz device and put it inside of a building with walls, it does help to sort of propagate better indoors. When you tend to put the RF devices outdoors, that's almost worst case scenario for some of these because there's no way for them to reflect and be diverted. So we would, you know, a small 200 seat theater with three belt packs should be perfect for Microcom M. Excellent for them. You know, the one thing you have to keep in mind is the environment, what, what kind of walls you have. If they're, if it's a lead line steel bunker, you're not going to transmit through it. But with 900 megahertz, as Art's diagram showed, and what he'll show in future diagrams during the theater part of this, is that the 900 megahertz is capable of going through some simple, straightforward, constructed walls. And when you step up to a medium, you get to a larger seating capacity and you need more belt packs usually in that situation. But again, 900 megahertz is a great way to go. 
with these particular environments here in the United States. Um, with 2.4, just keep in consideration your barriers and walls. But uh, indoors, 2.4 will do very, very well in a room. The wired connectivity is something that we are going to be talking about later on. Uh, down the road in the next few months, we have something in development at this time. Nothing to show you right now. Wish you did. We did, but um, we are working on something. We do have some solutions there, and of course, the entire Microcom family is budget friendly. So, and when you get into larger places, you know considerations are user count, areas of coverage that they need to be. If there's any kind of barriers or walls between them and each other and the master pack and where the master pack should be located as Art mentioned before you know the, the main leader of the group doesn't need to have the master pack uh, a very simple you know tripod based camera operator or even a spotlight operator in the middle of the house uh, he could have it and would be a perfect guy to have the master belt pack this way everyone's close to him and he's about midway located in a static location and you know of course the budget we spoke about that before <clears throat> uh mark hate to interrupt you but we do have a question that came in uh and it asks can mpacs be used along with xr packs sadly can... and go, go ahead go ahead okay. i was going to were you going to no no go ahead <laughs> yeah, M and XR are separate animals altogether. They cannot be used and intermingled between groups of users all on the same team working the same job. What is worth noting is you are able to run Microcom M and XR groups of people in the same area with a separation of how many... Ten, 10 groups. Yeah. 10 groups. So, you know, you just have to separate them by 10 groups, and that will enable the RF to co mingle very nicely. And Art looks like you have something you want to add to that. Yeah, the only thing I would add is just to be clear that there's no communication between M and XR. As you mentioned, you know, they, you can't mix, have a mix of M and XR on the same group or same system, really. But yeah, you answered the question, just clarifying. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. And as soon as my keyboard starts agreeing with me, did you give me back control? Uh, you should still have control. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, well, it's my turn anyhow, so why don't we just... <laughs> we'll just Fine, that way. <laughs> we will switch on over. Forgot I was next. Yeah, so Mark, thank you uh, for sharing some information on House of Worship applications. Um, I'm going to focus a little more on the theater application and also give you some real world uh, range tests that we did uh, here locally uh, in Auburn, Alabama. Um, but just like your House of Worship applications, um, really this whole simplicity thing, we can't hammer that home enough. Um, so if you've got students or volunteers, um, usually in a lot of the applications, such as House of Worship and theater, you don't have people that are real technical. Um, it's as simple as basically once you set it up, they just need to turn on their pack, plug in a headset, and then they go. Um, the other part of that, which Mark will mention um, when we talk about headsets, is the Smart Boom headset, which even allows them to turn on and off their mic very easily just by lifting up the mic boom. Um, but once again, it's one pack for multiple operations, no need for a base station. Um, and wired infrastructure is not required. So I know a lot of people may even have a wired infrastructure. Um, but rather than replace any part of their wired um, um, intercom system, a lot of people are just going completely wireless. And this is a good budget-friendly way to do that is with uh, Microcom. So uh, beyond the simplicity, uh, it's very versatile. Um, as we mentioned, there's a lot of different headsets to, to choose from. And these are, are the same headsets we use for our crewcom system, our very high-end professional headsets. Uh, and then you can have very easy uh, options in terms of some of the accessories, USB charging, uh, AC powering options, drop-in charger for the XR. So it's very versatile depending on the application. The other great thing is it's very expandable. So let's say you start out with two or three packs and it's working great for you. And as your theater grows or you need to add more uh, tech people, depending on the show, you're doing a big musical or something, you need a music director to have a pack or something like that. It's very easy just to add another belt pack add him as part of the system. He could be listen only, he could be shared for XR, or he can be full du duplex depending on how much you got. So very exp expandable. 
Um, so for theater applications, you do have a choice between M and XR, and it really comes down to what you're looking to do. Um, if your um, your production's a little more complex and you need more than one channel, um, Microcom XR is the way to go. If it's just a simple single channel that everybody's on, you're, let's say you're getting rid of your party line system, your wired system, and you just have a single channel that you've always been using for years, Microcom M is a great replacement for that. It's just a single channel uh, and still budget friendly. Um, so things to consider when you're using the product in the theater application. Um, this is just a, a, a possible application of a theater where you might have a couple of spotlight operators, a lighting director, stage managers, tech directors, and even possibly even uh, you know a separate group for like ushers or something like that. Um, but things to consider is where all those packs would be located. Uh, in this particular example, your one of your spotlight guys may be the best place to place your master. He's probably going to be standing in that position most of the time and you can tell him when he's done or whatever to just basically uh, put the pack in a central location or leave it there and not carry the pack with him um, but it depends on what you do it could be the lighting director or somebody centrally located um, and also you need to consider if these people need to be in separate um, intercom groups or what we've been calling work groups so um, and you, once you decide that you can set those groups up as needed uh, if you need to interface through a wired system, as Mark mentioned, um, with XR, we do a plan on having a wired uh, four-wire interface. Um, that's coming hopefully fairly soon, but uh, we're still working on that. So let's talk specifically about um, uh, something we did here in Auburn, Alabama. We're, we're definitely fortunate to have a really a world-class performing arts center that just got completed uh, last summer um, called the Goosh Performing Arts Center, part of Auburn University. Uh, it's a beautiful facility, as you can see here by the pictures. It's uh, 85,000 square feet, so it's a pretty big building. Um, the seating area is 1,202 people, and it also has an outdoor amphitheater. So the, we found this as a good uh, place to kind of go test uh, the microcom system and see what the indoor range would be, and also you know different surfaces and so forth. Uh, I will mention here that actually the Gouge Performing Arts Center is a CrewCom customer. They actually have a CrewCom system, but they're kind enough to let us uh, come in and do tests. Um, and I'll explain why they ended up going with a CrewCom system here in just a second. It'll, it'll become clear in just a, just a few minutes. Um, for this particular range test, we had uh, five packs, and we had them located throughout the, the theater. Uh, we did two tests um, with the master, first of all, being on the stage itself. Um, that particular person was actually kind of roaming the entire stage area, and we set that up as, as the master. Uh, looks like we have a question coming in, Mark. Yeah. I Lucas is asking us if he if XR is only available in 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, the the Microcom XR is available in 2.4 and 900 megahertz. So um, that's two separate models. Keep that in mind. Uh, you can't switch between 900 and 2.4 within the same uh, piece of hardware. So yes, um, yeah, that's actually I'm glad you asked that because we didn't clarify that there's two different different models for that. And also, Lucas, as you probably already know, and maybe some some of our attendees don't, uh, 900 megahertz is legal up in Canada. Yep. So um, in this particular case, we had the master on the stage, um, and then we moved the master to the control room. So we kind of did tests in both areas, and with 900 meg, actually, it didn't make a whole lot of difference between where the master was located. And I'll explain, it did make a little bit of a difference with 2.4, and I'll explain why in just a second. Um, but that was with the 5U mode, um, and we were, that's the extended range mode. So we had really no coverage issues whatsoever within the actual um, the theater space itself. Um, the furthest distance we got away, as you can see down here in the far bottom right, um, over here by the concession stand, we had a user that was able to go all the way out the door. These are doors at the back of the theater, all the way out into the lobby and over towards the concession stand, going through walls. And keep in mind, these are steel walls. These are not, it's not, um, you know, it's not uh, wood and, and um, what is the word I'm looking for, drywall. It's, uh, these are steel walls. So it was actually because of 900 meg is done propagation wise is better at reflecting. It was able to go through the door and then actually he was able to go around the corner. So now keep in mind, these doors over here are wooden doors. That's, uh, that's pretty important to note. Uh, even with the door closed though, he was able to, to get over here. So the range through the walls is actually better than what we expected. Uh, 2.4 actually went further than, than I expected personally. Um, but as you can imagine, it was more line of sight. 
Um, so in this case, as you can see from the furthest pack, uh, the two furthest packs away from each other, we were getting about 250 feet or 76 meters. And that was through the wooden doors that I just mentioned. But once he turned the corner, um, that pretty much it dropped out at that point. So line of sight again was, was very important. And also keep in mind in both examples here, he was still in range of this beacon here in the back. Now I'll point out here, this was the example I was telling you about. When we had the master on the stage, the problem we had was, is not the fact that the master wasn't broadcasting the beacon to all of the uh, different packs, but this pack here in the center was actually up in a spotlight booth, which is about 30 feet above the seating area. And because of that, and the fact that there's a balcony, and this control room is actually on the first level below the balcony, there's a lot of steel and concrete here in this balcony and wasn't able to, um, to basically log in with the master because of that. So that was just with the 2.4. Um, so, but other than that, um, we could have moved the master over back to the stage and everything worked fine. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing I wanted to add in, um, as you can see by the charts, the different frequencies have good diff different characteristics. Um, and we do use them both for a number of reasons. But uh, what you will find is the higher frequency devices by any manufacturer as you go up will be more affected not only by the environment, but also by the number of people. Uh, it, under the same conditions, an empty versus full theater, I'd expect the ranges to be about the same on 900, but probably reduced to 2.4 if you had a full house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually an excellent point. Uh, this particular test, by the way, there was no one in the theater other than us doing the testing. Um, one important thing to note, and this, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, I got another question coming in. Uh, yeah, we do have a question here again. Um, uh, in XR, can you run a combination of packs in regular mode and shared mode? Great question. And the answer to that one is yes. Um, you can operate in 5U mode for XR. You can operate up to four full duplex packs and unlimited number of share packs. And they all can be on that same system at the same time. Uh, in the 10U mode, it's up to nine full duplex packs and unlimited number of shared users. And those all can be on the same system at the same time. So yes is the answer to that. Um, as it shows here, I have a section in red. Um, and this explains why um, the Gouge Performing Arts Center actually uses CRUCOM. Uh, is, and this was a great test for us because everything back here from the stage area and along the side and then towards the back, there's a, even more steel uh, involved. And plus there's no openings that are using wooden doors. All of the doors along any part of this the part of the theater are all steel. So we really didn't have very good uh, coverage once you went backstage. So of course, for bigger productions and so forth, you would need to have coverage backstage. Now, if you go back, um, we had another uh, picture earlier um, of a um, theater in Texas, and that was an older theater that was made out of wood, and a lot of wood construction. They were able to go to different levels outside of the main theater area. So once again, it really depends on the environment you're in. And that was with 900 meg, but performance-wise, that was okay. But I had to point that out because that's one of the reasons that they, they use CRUCOM. They have multiple transceivers and they use roaming um, to cover everything that they need to cover. Uh, moving outside of the theater realm, um, obviously, microcom is great for any event-based communication. Uh, once again, because you only have one model, let's say you're a rental house, um, you only have to carry one model of inventory and then send out however many packs you need, based, and then you set the type of users and so forth based on the application. Send that out in a road case. Not a whole lot to worry about. You just tell them to turn it on, plug in your headsets, and you can go. Um, great for low-budget, last-minute productions or even add-ons to other productions. Um, it's very pick and go, um, very mobile. Uh, as Mark mentioned with the House of Worship presentation, let's say you're um, in a, some kind of environment where you're moving different places, makes it great for that. Full set of headsets, Mark's gonna talk about. The storage, cell. it's a pretty small pack. I mean, this gives you a relative size in, in my hands. I have average size hands. So um, the packs themselves are very small, so they take up um, little space. And also we have a full complement of uh, accessories, cases, chargers, et cetera, um, that go with the system. With that, I'm going to hand it back over to Mr. Reefus, and he's gonna tell you about the headsets, and then we're gonna pretty much wrap it up after that. 
Yep, we only have 7,000 more slides to go here, so it won't take too much longer and too much more of your time. <laughs> but uh, this is the, uh, the family shot of the headsets that we're offering for Microcom. And as you see across top there, those three headsets are the same as what we offer for Crewcom. Those are professional headsets, high quality transducers, electric condenser microphones. There should be no complaints from anybody with the sound quality of these headsets and the comfort and how long they last and working with them long periods of time. Yes, Hart, did you hear me? That was a false alarm. Okay. Uh, our headsets, the Smart Boom uh, PHS SBs, they all offer Smart Boom technology where the goose neck, the boom microphone, can turn off the microphone depending upon the position where it is. And as it's indicated there, you turn it to the 12 o'clock position on your head and your mic is off. So you're off mic at that point. Gary, hi there. Hi. Uh, another thing to point out, uh, especially because we have so many of our, our partners on today, um, what you'll see is these headsets look very similar to the original smart booms. They are different, however, because the uh, Microcom M and XR uh, do use an Electrap mic. And so we've introduced the uh, Smart Boom for both the uh, connection to Microcom and also for the Crewcom system. As Gary had mentioned, the uh, electric condenser microphone is noted in the model number as an E. So if it doesn't have that E in it, you're not gonna wanna necessarily use it for Microcom XRM. And then these two specialty headsets that we're offering, the in-ear boom microphone on the left here, as well as the lavalier earpiece on the right. Yes, sir. Yeah, just also, I happened to think of it when I was, when you were talking about the smart booms, we should also mention, as Gary mentioned, because we've got a lot of our partners here, um, you'll notice that the model number ends in DMG, and we had a previous model number that was just DM, and DM stands for dual mini, and then the DMG is a dual mini gold connector, and the reason we switched over from a, just a simple dual mini to a dual mini gold is because the XR um, requires a little bit more uh, around the edge of where the connector is, so it completely seats um, up against the pack itself. So we had to make that change, and we actually have um, the DMG headsets are, of course, in stock now. But if you have some old, let's say you have a demo system, and you have an old uh, cable that it doesn't have the gold connector on it we need to get those swapped out for you so i just kind of wanted to mention that thanks for bringing that up and one thing also and i'm going to go back one slide here if i can there we go these three models here out of these three the two the sb 110 and a 210 have replaceable cables on them so Really, all we'll need to do for anyone who has this style of headset that wants to use it with the XR microphone, XR system, we can just send them a cable and they can purchase an extra cable. So, what we're going to get into here shortly are the different markets and applications where the headsets really shine in and what we're envisioning these going into. So, I shot past that one a little too quick, but you know, there's a lot of things to consider and, and these are pretty logical and straightforward, but I'll bring them up anyway. You know, do you want to have it on the ear? Do you want to have the ear cup over your ear? Do you want it small and inconspicuous so it doesn't distract the attendees of the function or event that you're working at? And do you need to push the talk function? Uh, we offer that on these other special specialty headsets over here to the right. Anything that has a PTT in the model numbers push to talk device. So the 11 LEDMG, I mean, shucks, we can imagine that being in houses of worship all day long, small community theaters and nice quiet theaters, video production, especially, and in K through 12, where they need to have headsets that are affordably priced and fit on little, little people's heads. And then we go into the, the SB110E and the 210, which are larger format, over-the-ear cup construction. The smart boom technology is, does the SB11. Um, 
These guys would be great for loud environments like a live rock concert or a, a nightclub, you know, event production where there's a lot of uh, audience participation, like a football game or something of that nature. Uh, video production, if you're doing something high level and you really need to be isolated, the the SB110 and C10 are, you know, a lot of go-to headsets for some of our uh, pro power users. And in House of Worship, this may be a headset you want more choose to use. And then we have the specialty microphone headsets. Hello, Gary. Hey, um, just so I'm, I'm sorry to catch in the middle. I thought that was, this was that was the last headset slide. Um, I just wanted to take a second while we're talking about headsets to mention um, one of the two things that are happening for our partner channel. Uh, one is there there are some uh, quantity discount uh, purchase programs going on right now for headsets. One of the things that we're seeing in the marketplace, and this is really important for everybody from a broadcaster to a rental house, is because of the social distance issue, um, many uh, of the users for intercom, especially in production in the day hire guys, are now opting to purchase their own headset. So they're not just taking one off the shelf that somebody brought in. And so we're seeing a lot of uh, people buying their own in combination with uh, the five pin version that we have and the Flex LR adapter. And uh, we're also seeing where broadcasters uh, do have a sanitation, a sanitary procedure that they're doing. They do need to purchase additional headsets because those headsets that they're cleaning are gonna be offline for some time. So, uh, you know, for those of you who uh, work with the resellers or might be a dealer, keep that in mind. It's a real service to your customer uh, to be able to have these in stock when, uh, as the production start to ramp up and somebody suddenly has a gig and realize they don't have a headset as theirs. Thanks, Gary. And moving forward through the specialty headsets, there's in this range of microphones, we also offer a push to talk. Mark, push I think you, you need a push to talk, Mark. Yeah, I pushed it and I started talking. It seems to be working now. So the, uh, the church, marketplace, house of worship, theater, video production, school, K through 12, higher education, community college, technical schools, all great applications for these microphones. And, and now we're, we're gonna, we, we're transitioning back over to um, talk about RF real quick, and then we're gonna wrap things up. So thanks, Mark. Thanks for going through all the, the different headsets. Uh, as you mentioned, as you can see, there's a pretty big selection and some really good headsets uh, made specifically for our microphone series. Um, just some real quick information on 2.4, because um, that is a consideration if you're going to be working outside of the North America or Oceania. Um, there are two models of the 2.4 Microcom. There's a Microcom M 2400 and a Microcom XR 2400. Both of those, by the way, are CE compliant. So if you're going into uh, CE-based countries in Europe uh, or the Middle East, uh, that particular product is authorized to be used there. Um, one thing to consider about 2.4, it is worldwide license-free. 900 meg is also license-free. You don't have to get a, a license for that. Um, but in terms of 2.4, you can go pretty much anywhere in the world um, without having to worry about getting a license. Um, other things to consider about 2.4, which uh, we do need to add to the list, what Gary mentioned about the, uh, the absorption of people being in the room. But in addition to that, um, Wi-Fi is a big consideration. Um, you do, even though we are using the same spectrum of Wi-Fi, the 2.4 spectrum, this is not a Wi-Fi device, so it doesn't act as a Wi-Fi device. It actually uh, operates in conjunction, uh, can coexist with a Wi-Fi device. Um, also, same thing with lighting controllers and so forth. So you got to be real cognizant of that. So stay away from access points and so forth uh, as much as possible. Uh, it's a little more difficult because you have uh, packs that are moving around, but you know you have to be aware of that. Um, but it is Wi-Fi friendly and coexists uh, with Wi-Fi. And as you've seen by some of the range tests that we've done, uh, it's much more line of sight. So um, within a big room or something like that, a church or a theater or so forth, should be no issue uh, depending on the size of the space. Um, but definitely a line of sight much more than the uh, the 900 meg product. 
Um, so as a comparison, uh, as I just mentioned, 2.4 versus 900, 2.4 worldwide, 900 is North America and Oceania. Um, these are the frequencies that they operate in, uh, just so you kind of get an idea of where that is. You may hear the mention of 900 meg um, other bands. There's actually another band in the U.S. Um, that is a licensed band. Um, from what I remember, it's the STL 900 meg, 947 through 952. So anyhow, it's in the upper part of the 900 meg band. This is different. This is the unlicensed ISM band. So keep that in mind. Um, it doesn't affect what, how many number of users you have, whether you're 2.4 or 900, that has no effect on the number of users, whether you're in 10U mode or 5U mode or using XR or M, that does, has, has no, no bearing on that. Um, and then of course, range differences uh, between the, the two different uh, frequency bands is something to keep in consideration when you're uh, specking a system or, or getting ready to, to purchase a system. All right, and so we're actually down to the um, end of the presentation, and uh, we'll ask uh, Gary to join back in if you can, if, unless there's some any any more questions. If you have any more questions, this is your last chance uh, to answer questions, and we'll take them as we go. Otherwise, I'll hand it off to Gary. Okay. Well, I guess uh, you guys did a great presentation because it's uh, only uh, the questions that have been asked so far. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, there is a link on our website that will give you uh, this and the other webinars that are coming. Uh, and about, uh, is it next week or the week after, right, that we're doing the next session? Yeah, the next session is CrewCom Live, where we're going to focus on uh, Crewware uh, primarily, where you can kind of play along, so to speak, and download the software and play with us. Um, yeah, that's going to be on two. We're going to use the same schedule pretty much um, Wednesday at 9 a.m. Central and, and then Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Repeated. Yeah. And, and then uh, also, I'll mention, by the way, um, we will have the videos of all these um, webinars up on our website as well, links to that. Yes, as well as the handouts that we've got prepared here. Yep. Um, a lot of information. All right. So if anybody needs anything, feel free to reach out and um have a great afternoon and a great weekend take care everyone thanks everybody bye-bye see ya